Okay, all stable now. I hope an earthquake doesn't knock down this tower. Wow, this is huge and giant. That's so cool, Ryan. Oh, hey guys, hey. Whoa, this no, is really cool. No, oh, it's oh, it's oh, it's oh, it's Welcome to Ryan's world! Just one more piece! Yay! Yay! Oh, oh yeah! We Ryan. did! Hey, what's Whoa. going on? Oh, oh. 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 oh no, oh. the earth's cracking! Oh. 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 Okay, okay! Oh. Oh. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, it's still shaking a little bit! Whoa. I know that was a strong earthquake. Mommy, but what causes earthquakes? Good question. What and what is an earthquake, right? I'm gonna explain it to you. Okay, be okay. right back. Whoa! Where did mommy go? Wait, what? Where? What? What? Whoa! Hi there. Did you know that earthquake means there's a sudden, violent shaking ah, of the ground? But what makes the ground shake? Is it because I'm jumping up and down? Or is it because the earth is growing bigger and bigger and bigger? Woo! Or is it because the earth is made of plates that slide around on top of hot molten magma? Yes, that's right! The earth is like this orange. On the inside, it's squishy and full of fluid. Woo. On the outside, the orange peel is like the Earth's crust. The Earth's crust is broken up into what we call tectonic plates. Whoa, look, they go back together. All along the cracks of the tectonic plates are where earthquake happens. Pretty cool, huh? Did you know the place where earthquakes happen are called faults? There are three different kinds of faults that makes earthquake happen. One, two, three. We are going to demonstrate how all these happen. Are you ready? Let's pretend these puddings are like the inside of the earth. The pudding is like the magma. Look how jiggly they are. Whoa! The Rice Krispie treats are like the Earth's crust. The first type of fault is a transform fault. This means that the plates slide and slide past each other just like this. The second type of fault is called a divergent fault. This means that the plates pull away from each other, look. And the third type of fault is called a convergent fault. This means that the two plates push together. Whoa! This is how mountain and hills happen. Whoa! So those are the three kinds of faults that cause earthquakes. What? Well, what is that? Whoa! Whoa, did you guys feel that? That was a real earthquake. I wonder how big that one was. Did you know that you can measure earthquakes? They get score on how strong they are. And they go all the way to 10 on what is called the Richter scale. The bigger the number, the stronger the earthquake. Wow. So, an earthquake that measures a 2.5, whoa, whoa, is smaller and it doesn't cause as much damage, but an earthquake that measures an 8.5, whoa, whoa, whoa! Whoa, do you guys see? That's a lot of damage, whoa! So now that we have all this amazing knowledge on earthquake, it's time for a pop quiz. Are you ready? Question number one. Why do earthquake happen? A, is it because the season changed? B, is it because the 
Earth is so bored? <sighs> or is it because C, Earth, is made of plates that slide around on top of hot, molten magma? That's right, the answer is C. Earth is made of plates that slide around on top of hot, molten magma. Question number two. How many kinds of fault are there? A, is it 10? B, are there three kinds of faults? Or C, a hundred type of faults? That's right, the answer is B, which is three. There are three kinds of faults. Final question, number three. How big does the Richter scale go? A, 10, B, one, or C, one million. That's right, the answer is A, which is 10. The Richter scale goes from one all the way to 10. Yay, good job, you guys all the questions correct. And if you didn't, it's okay. Just try again. Good job. Thank you for trying. Now that we learned so much about earthquake, whoa, one is coming. So I better go and tell Ryan, okay? Whoa. Okay, all stable now. So Ryan, that's how earthquake happens. That's very cool, Mommy. I hope an earthquake doesn't knock down this tower. Wow, this is huge and giant. That's so cool, Ryan. Oh, hey, guys. Hey. Whoa, this is really cool. Sorry. Wang, you are so much fun. Whoa. Is that a tsunami? Uh oh. Mommy, Mommy. What happened, Ryan? The pool overflowed and now there's a giant wave. <gasps> oh no, like a tsunami? I think so, but mommy, how do tsunamis happen? <gasps> Good question, Ryan. Come on, explain it to you. Let's go, guys. Hi. Did you know that tsunamis can move as fast as 500 miles per hour? <gasps> I see one right there. Run. Whew. That's as fast as a jet plane. Is that a jet plane? Duck for cover! So, a tsunami is a sudden large sea wave or a series of waves due to water displacement. But why does tsunami happen? Because there's a movement of energy throughout the water. <gasps> okay, so tsunamis usually happen because of four different causes. <gasps> Number one, earthquake. If an earthquake is big enough, or if it happens underwater, it can travel through the water, and its energy can cause a tsunami. <gasps> is that another one? Thanks a lot, earthquake! The second cause of tsunami is underwater volcanic eruption. When a volcano erupts underwater, like so, the water must go somewhere, and all the energy that comes out of the volcano forces its way through the water, making a tsunami. <gasps> Look, I see volcanic eruption underwater right now. Oh no, we better run away from that too. The third way a tsunami can happen is a submarine landslide. Sometimes if there's a giant amount of ice or debris or rock that slide through the water, it will cause a tsunami on the other side. The fourth reason that could cause a tsunami is falling meteor. Yup, that's right. Even giant falling meteors from space 
crash into the water and create a tsunami. <gasps> That's a meteor right there. Oh no, dodge it! Ah! Let's take a look at how this happens. So this science experiment will show us the difference between regular wave and tsunami. Here we have the land. And here we have the ocean. So if we turn on the fan like so, what wave will go this way towards land because of the winds and tides? Wow. Look, look at Gus and Moko. Whee! <laughs> But a tsunami is different because water is displaced and energy will move through the water. We'll create the tsunami using this board. So you can see the difference. Let's say a powerful earthquake hits and underneath the water, the plates will move. Wow, do you feel it? <gasps> this board will demonstrate what will happen when the earthquake creates a tsunami. Look you will see the water rise up because the water is being displaced. Wow. Then you will see the energy move sideways. Oh no, guys, be careful. Pack Alpha Alexa, Gus, Mo, be careful. Then you will see the tsunami form growing taller and taller and it will smash against the land. Watch out, Red Titan and Combo. And look, the tsunami's carrying all this stuff back into the ocean. Look, there are towels in the ocean, there are beach balls in the ocean, and they're floaty. Carrying back and all the rocks too, it's going back into the ocean. Wow, that's such a powerful tsunami. But it's okay, they're okay, right? Wow, could you imagine if this tsunami is in real life? It would have been super powerful and strong. Well, now that we learned so much about tsunami, let's take a pop quiz. Number one, how fast can a tsunami move? Is it A, 500 miles per hour? Or is it B, 100 miles per hour? Or is it C, only one mile per hour? Did you guess it? It is A, 500 miles per hour, as fast as a jet plane. Question number two, why does a tsunami happen? Is it because of A, because there's a movement of energy through the water? Or is it because B, it makes the dinosaur extinct? Sorry, dinosaur. Or is it because C, because there's a giant shark in the water. Look, there's one right now. <gasps> oh, it's a friendly shark. Hi, Mr. Shark. Did you, you guess, guess it? it? Why does tsunami happen? It's because A, there's a movement of energy through the water. Question number three. What can cause a tsunami? Is it because of A, an angry, angry whale? Or is it because of B, earthquake, underground volcano, landslide, and meteors? Did you guess it? The answer is B. What caused a tsunami? Earthquake, underground volcanoes, landslide, and meteor. Yeah, you guys did so great. And if you didn't get all the answer right, it's okay, you can try again. Now, let's go back and tell Ryan everything that we know about tsunami, okay? Let's go! Hey Ryan, I'm back. Hi, Mommy. Did you learn a whole bunch about tsunami? Yeah. Yeah. Got you! Oh, oh. Spinning, 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 spinning! Oh, oh. Oh, still dizzy. Oh. Wait a minute, Ryan! Oh. Oh, I'm gonna blow you away! Tornado. 
tornadoes form? Good question. How do tornadoes form? I'll be right back. Wah! Where did mommy go? Oh. Hi guys, did you know that our tornado can spin as fast as 300 miles per hour? Wow. Also, our tornado can destroy buildings, power lines, whoa, look up there, and uproot trees. Ah! A tornado is a rapidly rotating columns of air that forms during the storm and connects with the ground through a funnel cloud. So now that we know what a tornado is, we need to know why they form. First, we need a very, very special kind of storm. Can you guess what kind of storm? It's loud, strong, and they can be scary. Did you guess what kind of storm? That's right, a thunderstorm. Oh. Oh, oh, I'll be right back. But the kind of storm you need to produce a tornado whoa, is called a supercell thunderstorm. That means it's a storm with rain, hail, lightning, and fast wind. Whoa. Now, why does a tornado form from a supercell thunderstorm? It's because warm, moist air meets cool, dry air and the wind's direction change. Now, let's check it out. First, we have warm air rising. Ooh, cool, dry air sinks. It becomes a vortex or funnel where the inside is warm, but the outside is cold. It gets stronger and stronger, and it spins faster and faster. Finally, it touches the ground, and it becomes a tornado. Here it is, hi. Now for the fun part. What about we make our own tornado? Are you guys ready to create our own tornado? Look at this. Whoa, so we colored the water blue to make it more interesting. This is heavy, it's like, ugh, work out. Okay, on a count of three, we're gonna flip the bottle over to see if the tornado form. Ready? One, two, three. Yeah! Ah! Oh no, what do you guys notice? What happened? There's no tornado. Aw. Do you guys know what we should do? What if we try to just swirl the water like so? Woo! Whoa, what do you guys see now? Do you see how as the water begins to move, it creates energy and it makes it flow downwards. Look at that. Now that's a real tornado. And as the water flows down, the air from the bottom bottle flows up to replace it. That was so much fun. You ready to see it again? Okay, so what do we have to do? We have to shake it. Whoa, the water's spilling out, but it's okay. Whew. Whoa, look at that tornado go. Woo. Wow, that was so much fun making this awesome tornado. But now, let's go and meet a real live tornado. Let's go. So now we're outside and there's a giant storm happening behind us. Do you guys see it? There's some big clouds here and it's getting, it's getting pretty windy. These are perfect condition for a, a, a tornado! I wonder if it's a nice tornado. Let's see. Hi, Mr. Tornado. Well, howdy there. Uh, wait, what are you doing out here? 
Don't you know how dangerous tornadoes are? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know! Well, I'll warn you a little bit about us. But you have to promise to keep yourself safe if you ever see one of us again, all right? Okay, so what makes tornadoes so dangerous? Well, you see, we spin really fast. 300 miles per hour, right? You're absolutely right. Some of us can spin that fast. We're also unpredictable, too. So what does that mean? That means we can pop out of the storm at any time, at any place, and it can be a weak tornado or a strong one. You don't know till you know, you know? So what are we supposed to do? If you have a basement, get to it. If you don't, go to the lowest floor and find a safe place in your house that isn't close to windows, like a bathroom or a closet. That's some good advice, thank you. That's right, so get on and get safe. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Tornado, bye. So now that we know so much about Tornado, let's take a quiz. Question number one. What is a tornado? Is it a hurricane? Is it your best friend? Or is it rapidly rotating columns of air that connect a thunderstorm to the ground? That's right. A tornado is a rapidly rotating column of air that connects a thunderstorm to the ground. Next question, why do tornadoes form? Is it because warm, moist air meets cool, dry air and wind direction changes? Is it because they are late for dinner? Or is it because they are looking for their money? That's right, a tornado forms because warm, moist air meets cool dry air, and the wind direction changes. Question three, what should you do to stay safe from a tornado? Is it, let's go to the basement or safe room on the lowest level with no windows? Or should we dance in the rain? If there's a tornado, should you just eat some yummy candy and watch YouTube videos? That's right! If you see a tornado, the best way to stay safe is to go to the basement or a safe room on the lowest level where there is no window. Great job! Now that we learned so much about tornado, let's go back and tell Ryan, okay? Let's go! Whoa. That's how a tornado is There's red, there's indigo, there's blue, and orange! Wow, that's a lot of colors, seven. Whoa, what's wrong, Rainbow? Oh, the rainbow doesn't look too happy. Wait a minute, something doesn't look right with the rainbow. I know, it's in the wrong order. Did you know that the colors of the rainbow are always in the same order? What is it again? What is that order? Hmm. It is Roy G. Biv. 
Say it with me. Roy G. Biv. 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 R is for red. O is for orange. Y is for yellow. G is for green. B is for blue. I is for indigo. V is for violet. Roy G. Biv. 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 You got it. That's it. That's the order. Roy G. Biv. <gasps> there we go. Now the rainbow looks so happy. So now we know the order and the color of the rainbow. But why did the rainbow appear after the big storm? Oh no, I think a storm is coming. I better use my umbrella. Ooh. I better run inside the house. I'll be right back. Is the storm over? Oh, yay, it is! Yay! Now let's see if we can find that rainbow. Where is the rainbow? Ah, ah, there it is! Rainbow! Yay, look at this! Oh, wait a minute. This is not a real rainbow. This is just a pool float. Let's test it out. Oh, this will be so much fun in the pool. So when a storm comes and it rains really hard, it leaves water droplets in the sky. These droplets refract, which means bend light. So when the sun shines white light on the water droplet, the light bends. And we see all seven colors because they bend at different angles. Red is first, orange is second, Yellow is third, green is fourth, blue is fifth, indigo is sixth, and violet is seven. Roy G. Fifth. So seven colors total. The first person to discover how a rainbow works was Sir Isaac Newton. He shines a white light on a prism like this. I'm gonna use a flashlight. Let's test it out. Did you guys see the rainbow right there? Isn't it neat? I also heard there is a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So let's go catch that rainbow. Let's go. Look, there's a rainbow over there. Let's see if we can find the treasure at the end of the rainbow. Hurry, let's go. Whew. Whew. Ah. 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 No, we can do this. We can do this. Come on. Oh, are we getting any closer, you guys? Are we? Ah, 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 the rainbow is so far away. I don't think I can ever reach the rainbow. What should I do? Who are you? Hello, I'm a leprechaun. Are you trying to get a hold of me, pot of gold? I was trying. I was trying to get to the rainbow. But no matter how fast I run, I don't think I can ever get to the rainbow. That's because the rainbow never really ends. As long as the water droplets are in the sky, the sunlight will make the colors appear at the same distance away from you. So if I keep running, I'll never get to the rainbow? No, dearie. Oh man, but then how do you know where your pot of gold is? That's me little secret, but I can share some with you if you want. Yes, please. Thank you so much, Mr. Leprechaun. You're welcome. Don't spend it all at once. I will try my best, but these look so delicious. So, thank you. Yeah, what, what is this? Oh, this is some awesome glasses. What'd you guys think? Now that we know so much about rainbow, let's take a quiz. Question number one, what are the colors of the rainbow? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet? Or is it pink, green, gray, turquoise, black, blue, and tan? Or is it white? Question number two, why do rainbow appear after the storm? So leprechaun can hide their gold, sunlight shines on water droplets, and they refract lights, or is it hot outside? Question number three. How many colors are there in a rainbow? 
50, 1, or 7. Great job! I have so much fun learning about rainbows with you. Now let's share this pot of treasure with Ryan. Let's go! Woo! And that's how a rainbow is formed. And look what I brought for you. What is that? A one million dollar. You are, I didn't even know that was in there. Wow. Oh, oh they're just chocolate. <laughs> chocolate million dollars. Oh, wow, it's huge. Yeah, and chocolate coins. Wow. <laughs> Hey, Daddy, have you seen Ryan? Where's Ryan? Where's Ryan? Ryan! Oh, what? What Ryan! Is that? What, is that? what was that? Lava? What? Is it lava? Oh, oh, no. Watch out, Mommy! Oh, oh. It's erupting! Oh. Where is it? Where's oh, Ryan? Oh, Ryan! Wait, wait, I think I see some. Oh, I think I see some. <laughs> Who's Ryan? Ryan! 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 You pranked us! You were the gold king. Yeah. Right? Good question. I'll be right back. Whoa. Where did mommy go? Mommy! A volcano is a hill or a mountain on Earth's crust that's connected to the magma chamber underground. The best part about a volcano is the lava and the magma. <gasps> did you know? Lava and magma are two different things. The magma is underground, whoa, woo! And lava is when it's on the surface. So only after the magma breaks the Earth's surface, it's when it's called the lava. Oh, look, it's coming! Ah! Oh no, the floor is lava! We gotta run! Ah! Wow, look at the eruption. <coughs> wow, there's so much ash in the air. We gotta go, okay? Come on, let's go. Wow. Volcanoes erupt because pressure is being forced out of the Earth's surface. Sometimes there's too much pressure and it just explodes. Wow, so just like if you take the soda can and you shake it, and pressure start building up and up and up. It will explode when you open it. Just like a volcano does when the earth crusts open. Whoa! Whoa! Crust? Did somebody say crust? Yes. Like a pizza crust? Yes, the earth crust. You're right, Gus. It's kind of shaped like a pizza crust, too. Mmm, can I have some? Sure, of course. There's plenty of pizza to share. Gus, you have to learn how to share. Oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> so if you cut open the earth and take out a piece that looks like a pizza slice, the earth crust will be in the same place as where the pizza crust would be. Wow, this looks super yummy and delicious. Some volcanoes explode so big that it makes a huge hole that you can see all the way from outer space. Wow, look! I see the volcano right now! Some volcanoes even have produced a whole island like Hawaii. <gasps> I have an idea. Let's go to Hawaii! We're in Hawaii! And guess what? Got my sunglasses. Got my beach ball. And got my pool noodles. Let's get swimming in Hawaii. Whoa! Now let's go on an adventure inside a volcano. Let's go! Whoa! 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 We're here! So now we are underneath the earth crust and do you guys hear it? I hear lots and lots of rumbling. Whoa! Whoa! Let's get out of here. Whoa! Whoa! Whoa, it was a close one. Whoa! Oh no, 
it's getting full of ash and gas in here. Whoa, we're getting close. I can see the magma. Let's keep going. Wow, this is fun. Whoa, it's like a sea of magma. Whoa, wait, what was that? We should get out of here while we can. Let's go. Whoa. Oh no, guys, the volcano is about to blow. The floor is magma. We gotta hurry. Let's go. Get, get out of here. Whoa. That was so much fun. Let's do a pop quiz. Question number one. Where does lava flow? On the Earth's surface? The North Pole? Or in the glacier? The answer is the Earth's surface. Question number two. Where does magma flow? On Antarctica? Underground? Or is it in a tornado? Magma flows underground. And last question. Why does volcano erupt? Is it because they're full of yummy pizza? Mm. Or is it because pressure is being forced out of the Earth's crust? Or is it because that's how soda is made? The answer is, is because the pressure is being forced out of the Earth's crust. If you got it right, good job! And if you didn't, it's okay, because we're learning right now you can answer and try again. Mommy's coming back, let's prank her. Hey Ryan, that's why a volcano erupts. Wait, where's Ryan and where's Daddy? Whoa, it's not again, you guys! Oh. What's that noise? It's raining, do you hear it? It's thunder! Oh, Mommy, I think there's lightning, too. Oh, okay, yeah, look up! Oh, mommy, we gotta go inside. Hurry, let's go! Oh. Oh. That was close, super close. But why does lightning happen? Good question, Ryan. Let me show you, come here. Okay. Huh? Whoa. Hi again, so why does lightning happen? Whoa! Did you know lightning happen is because of electrostatic discharge between the cloud up there and the ground down below. So static electricity is like when you rub your socks across the carpet, and then you shock someone. Lightning is just like that, except bigger and stronger. Yeah, yeah, whoa. See, whoa. when a storm like that happens, that static electricity in the air Static electricity creates a current, and it works its way from one cloud to another, or it touches the ground. Whoa, see it's coming! Whoa! Just like that. Let's get out of here. A storm cloud is like a battery. Look at that. Plus at the top, minus at the bottom. Now, Think of a whole bunch of batteries stacked from the ground all the way to the clouds. Whoa, did you guys see that? Once all of the batteries are connected, that's lightning, watch out! And then again, Whoa! So when lightning happens, it disturbs the air. And the sound that you hear, you guys hear that? That's thunder. Do you guys hear that? Do you see that? What is that? Uh, <gasps> Who are you? I am Thor, son of Odin, god of thunder. 
That's right, Thor, God of Thunder. You're the perfect person to help us learn all about lightning. Can I ask you a few questions? Of course, I know all about thunder and lightning. You know that big ball of flash? How is it created? Well, that big flash you see is when the negative energy in the sky connects to the positive energy in the ground, creating a channel for the electricity to connect. Wow, and how strong is it? How strong is it? It can contain up to one billion volts of electricity. A billion volts? That is super strong. Can you handle all that power? Uh, of course, I'm Thor, son of Odin, god of thunder and also lightning. Can you show us? Sure. If I get this hammer, I can control lightning. Ah, it won't even move. How? What am I doing wrong? It won't budge. Ah, ah. That's something. How are you doing that? Bye. Wow, he's so powerful and strong. Now that you guys learned so much about lightning, let's take a pop quiz. Question number one. So why does lightning occur? A, it's because of electrostatic discharge between the cloud, way up there, to the ground, way down below. Or is it because of B, Captain America is angry? I'm angry! Lightning strike! Or is it C, a volcano, oh no, is erupting. Oh no, guys, a volcano! Do you guys know the answer? It's A, it's because of the electrostatic discharge between the cloud and the ground. Question number two. What sound is made from lightning? Is it A? A mouse squeaking? Or is it B, a lion roar? <laughs> or is it C, thunder? Well, what'd you guys guess? The answer is C, thunder. Did you hear that? Did you guys hear the thunder? Oh, it's super loud. Question number three. Lightning can carry up to how many volts of electricity? Is it A, five volts? Or is it B, 10 volts? Or is it C, a billion volts? Did you guys guess the answer? It is C, a billion volts. That's a, such a huge number. Good job learning all about lightnings today. And if you didn't get them all right, it's okay. You can try again next time. Now, let's go back and tell Ryan all that we learned, okay? Let's go. Whoa. Okay, guys, let's tell Ryan all about lightning. But where is Ryan? 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 Ryan, you in there? Yeah, Mommy. I was hiding from the lightning. Is it still there? It's gone, Ryan. Let's come out and play. Yay! Yay! <laughs> hey, Ryan. What? Guess what? What? The floor is about to flood. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Mommy, that was close. Why do floods happen? Good question, Ryan. I'll be right back. Oh. Hi guys, did you know that it only takes about six inches of water to knock a person off its feet? Which means it only takes this much of water for someone like me to walk. Whoa, the water's rising, whoa! Why do floods happen? So, a flood happens because there is an increase of water that has no place to go. 
Blood happens all over the world and usually happens in five different ways. The first way a flood can happen is by a hurricane. Hurricanes hit the water from the ocean and they bring is by a broken levee. A levee like that one regulates water flow. So if one breaks, breaking, all the water will come pouring out. It's breaking. You better get out of here again. The water's rising. Third way a flood can happen is if the snow is falling. Oh, it's cold, but it's getting warmer. Oh no! If a large amount of snow crawls, it can create a lot of moving water at once. Oh no, the snow is falling into water. Let's get out of here again. The fourth way a flood can happen is by an ice jam. An ice jam occur when giant chunk of ice block the flow of water and the water builds up higher and higher. Should we get out of here again? I think so, let's go. The fifth way a flood can happen is through heavy and usually slow moving rain. Oh, it's raining all over me. Oh, large amount of rain can cause flooding within weeks, days, hours, or even minutes while the rain Did you know a flood that happens suddenly is called a flash flood? <gasps> Do you guys see it? Flash flood! We gotta get out of here again! Okay, we are safe. <gasps> but I have an idea. Let's do a science experiment and see for ourselves. Let's go! So let's see what we have in this experiment. We have our community right over here. There's houses and buildings and cars and people. And there's this river that flows next to the village. So if we were to pour water down here, we would see that the water flows safely. But if something were to happen to this levee, the water will rise higher than it should. Are you ready to take it out? Wow! Oh no, without this levee, do you guys see it's overflowing? Look, this would be a flood. Poor Alpha. You okay? She's okay. And then if we have constant rain and the levee breaks at the same time, both of these would cause the water to be very high and rise very, very fast. Look. Oh no. Look at everything. Did you see how fast the flood happens? This would be an example of a flash flood. Since the water has nowhere else to go, the water just went higher and it went everywhere. Did you guys see what happened to the buildings and the people? The flood damaged a lot of the village. Now that we learned so much about flood, let's take a pop quiz. Question number one. Why does flood happen? Is it because A, the earth is crying? <laughs> or is it because B, there's an increase in water and the water has nowhere to go? Or is it because C, you brushed your teeth this morning and you forgot to turn off the water? Did you guys guess it? It is B, the flood happens because there's an increase in water with no place for the water to go. Question number two. How much water does it take to knock a human off their feet? Is it A, six inch of water? Or is it B, a million inches of water? Or is it 
see a bazillion inches of water. Did you guys guess it? The answer is A. All you need is six inches of water to knock a human off its feet. Oh no, the water is rising. Not even to my knee. Woo! And question number three. What is a flash flood? Is it A, a super strong superhero? I, a flash flood. Or is it B, a flood that happens suddenly? Or is it C, a flash flood is a fancy cheeseburger? Which one? Did you guys guess it? The answer is B, a flash flood is a flood that just happens so suddenly. So how did you guys do? didn't get the question right, it's okay. You can try again next time. For now that we learned so much about blood, let's go home and tell Ryan all about it. Let's go. So Ryan, that's why blood happens. Whoa, that's so cool. Wait, the floor is not bloody. on January 17, 1706. Benjamin Franklin had 16 siblings. John, Sam, Peter, Sarah. Oh, James, will you gather the rest of your siblings for me? Yes, I will, Mother. Thomas, Hannah, Mary. Come on, come on, gather round, gather round. Meet your new baby brother. What's his name? Benjamin. His name's Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin begins to love books and reading. He started work at his brother James' printing shop. James wanted him to only sell newspapers, but Ben wanted to write and be published. Uh, brother, yes. I have another article for you to print in your newspaper. Uh -huh. And who is this one from? Uh, me, uh, yeah, me, me friend, uh, Silence Do Good. Ah. Yes, yes, Miss Silence Do Good. Good, good. People are looking forward to this article. Now run along and sell more newspapers. <laughs> ah, my plan is working. My brother doesn't want to print my articles, but he will print them if he thinks they're by Miss Silence Do Good. <laughs> <laughs> what? You've been Miss Silence Do Good this entire time? I am tired of your pranks, Benjamin. Now run along, out of my print shop. Out. He left his brother's print shop and went to Pennsylvania, where he became very successful. He made the first pair of swimming flippers. No, 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 not flippers for your feet, flippers for your hands. <laughs> he started the first library. The Junto Club Lending Library is open for business. Now everyone can enjoy reading. He invented bifocals. Aha! Now I can see far away and up close. On his travels to Europe, he made the first map of the Gulf Stream. If we take the Gulf Stream, this river in the ocean will make our voyage much faster. He took over the Pennsylvania Gazette and owned his own newspaper. Extra, extra, read all about it. Get your Pennsylvania Gazette here. Oh, and don't forget your copy of Paul Richard's Almanac, most popular publication in the colonies. Ha <laughs> ha. He even started the first volunteer fire company organization. Oh, the lightning just hit another house. It caused a fire. We need men on this right away. We're on, Mr. Franklin. There they go. The Union Fire Company. I'm so proud of them. Oh, oh hey men, I'm working on something to take care of those fires. <laughs> Benjamin Franklin started to study lightning 
and he printed lightning experiments in his newspaper. Editor? Yes, Mr. Franklin? I need you to write down an experiment I've been pondering. I'm on it, Mr. Franklin. Ready. If one were to fly a kite with a metal key attached in a thunderstorm, lightning would strike the kite and produce an electric spark. Thus, lightning produces electricity. No, no, no. Lightning is electricity. Too many buildings were catching on fire because of lightning. So Benjamin Franklin invented a way to fix this. There we go. Now I've stuck this long piece of metal to the side of the house. Now it must be long enough to where I can reach into the air, but long enough so that it may stick into the ground. Now, with it in the ground, whenever lightning strikes the top, zoom! The electrical current will go straight into the ground. Thus, no more house fires. I shall call this invention the Franklin Rod. It is now called the Lightning Rod. Oh, very well then, the Lightning Rod. Benjamin Franklin was a great inventor and a good person. He used his writing to set such a good example for others. He was asked to help unite the colonies into one country. In order to be a good person, one must be sincere and honest, know what is right and wrong, and be humble in Mr. all Mr. Franklin! I'm looking for a Mr. Benjamin Franklin. Yes, I'm Benjamin Franklin. We read your writings and we agree with your beliefs. The Continental Congress would like to make you an official Pennsylvania delegate. If you accept, I would like your help with something. Uh, well, of course I accept. Uh, what is it that you need help with? It's a document called the Declaration of Independence. Hmm. Catchy name. I'll check it out. Oh, and what did you say your name was again? Thomas Jefferson. Wait, Th Thomas Jefferson? As in THE Thomas Jefferson? <laughs> Ben Franklin signed the Declaration of Independence, which made the colonies a new united country. Ha! Ah, I hereby instate this Declaration of Independence. We will be our own country soon. Would anyone like to sign? I would. Not only did Ben Franklin sign the Declaration of Independence, he also helped with the Constitution of the United States of America. I, James Madison, have completed the draft of the Constitution. Oh, may I see it? Yes, yes, of course. Oh. I think that this is as close to perfect as we're going to get. Yes, yes it is. This shall be the Constitution to the new United States. Woo! Woo! Woo hoo indeed! Indeed. <laughs> yes. I think we're going to celebrate now. But why don't you all test your knowledge with a pop quiz? Question number one. Which newspaper did Benjamin Franklin own? Is it A, the Pennsylvania Gazette? Or is it B, Nickelodeon Times? Or is it C, the Daily Bugle? <gasps> did you get the answer right? It is A, the Pennsylvania Gazette. Question number two. Which invention stopped lightning from hitting houses and creating fires? Is it A, video game? Or is it B, slime? Whoa! Or is it C, the lightning rod? Did you get the answer? It is C. The invention that stopped lightning from hitting houses and creating fire is the lightning rod. Question number three. Select two of the documents that Benjamin Franklin signed. Did he sign A, the Declaration of Independence? Did he sign B, the Constitution? Or did he sign C, the Krabby Patty Secrets. Did you get the answer? The answer is actually A and B. Benjamin Franklin signed the Declaration of Independence and 
the Constitution. Okay guys, I think the storm is over now. We can go fly a kite. Good idea, Ryan, let's go. <laughs>